Hello, it's Karen Berniston here with an assembly video for one of our die sets. This is die number 1175, Character Add-ons 1, and you can check out all of our die designs at KarenBerniston.com. There are 12 dies in the set, and they are add-on pieces. So what I mean by that is you do need the base die, which is 1131 Bitty Ball pop-up, to be able to make the structure of the characters, and then the add-on set will add those specific pieces you need to style them for Halloween. My favorite cardstock for constructing our pop-up ball dies is a 100-pound smooth cardstock, like the ones from the paper cut. So what we have now on our website are these little 6x6 exact packs. And what we've done is we have chosen colors to go in there that coordinate with our various character and animal add-on sets. So this is my very favorite cardstock to use with either of our ball dies, the Bitty Ball pop-up or the Surprise Ball pop-up, which is about 20% larger. And I like to place the ball die up as close as I can get to an edge because it leaves me so much space for decorator dies. Okay, I will start first with the assembly of the vampire. There is an assembly video for the Bitty Ball pop-up that will show you how to cut the two halves of the ball and connect them together. Now the two that I've cut for the head, I haven't connected together yet. I'm actually going to cut some of the decorator pieces first so that I can sandwich the nose in the middle. This is the die for the nose, and there is a color in the exact pack that's kind of a pale color that I'm going to use for skin. Obviously, skin tone is always customizable, so you can swap that out for a different color or change it with ink as needed. While I was cutting the nose, I went ahead and cut six decorator trapezoids out of the Bitty Ball set, and I will use those for the face. Now on the nose, if I put that on a piece of fun foam and take my bone folder and just push it into the foam and run it along there, it'll give it a little curl. And then as I join the two halves of the bitty ball together using my strong adhesive, I can set that nose into the glue and then it will actually be sandwiched between the two pieces. So it is the six panels closest to the nose that need those decorator trapezoids to be the face. For the head, I've cut seven decorator trapezoids out of black and then a black hexagon for the top. Then for the body, I've also cut a black hexagon and then nine decorator trapezoids. And then since I probably want to add my vampire to a card later and have him be able to spin around on the brad, I'll go ahead and add a brad through the hole at the bottom of the body. Okay, the top of the body is going to get a hexagon. And then I'm just going to take a pencil and mark the three panels that are not going to get decorator trapezoids. So they're going to be these three just below the hexagon for the top half of the body. Then for the top of the head, there'll be a hexagon. Then I'll take my pencil again and mark the two panels that aren't going to need decorator trapezoids. So these, these two on the bottom half of the head. Okay, so now taking a look, I've added all of those decorator trapezoids to all of the panels except the ones that have the X's in them. And that goes for both halves of the vampire, but it does leave me with three trapezoids that haven't been used. So what I'm going to do is use these two dies to shape the hairline of the vampire. So on the smaller end of the trapezoid, I'll just come down a little bit and center the V-shaped die. So you can see there's just a little bit down from the sides there. And then I'm just using some temporary tape to hold that into place. And then I will cut at the same time the swoopy die that will cut the side of the hairline. And so I'm just kind of trying to come down on that right side about the same distance as my V. Okay, so then this piece that came out can be used as a guide to do it again with the other one, but we want the mirror image. So I flip that piece over, line it up with the other side, and then I can take the die and just put it up next to that little cutout piece, you know, just slide it until it butts up next to it, and then I'm going to get a mirror image matching piece for the other side of his hair. Okay, so now I have two matching pieces that can be the hairline on the side for the vampire. And then don't throw away the scraps because they're actually big enough to use. The one that was used for the center is big enough, that scrap, to get the smile for the vampire. And then one of the other scraps is big enough to do the eyes that come out of the bitty ball. 
Okay, so just gluing on those three pieces to create the hairline, lining them up with the edge of the decorator trapezoids. Next, I'll glue on the eyes, and I do like to use my quick stick. That can be real handy with the small pieces for picking them up and placing them. A white gel pen works great to just add a little catch light to the eyes. Then I add his smile to the panel below the nose. Now in this exact pack set, there actually isn't a white because you need so little of it. You just need a little scrap of white that's enough to cut one trapezoid and a set of teeth. So I just glue the teeth then over the mouth, kind of at whatever angle that I like. And then the other white piece, which is the trapezoid, is going to be used as his shirt. So that's one that's going to go on the body piece in the center panel that has an X. Now completely optional, but one way to get buttons on the front of his shirt is to use the eyes die out of the bitty ball as a stencil. So I'm just going to place that over the shirt and then trace around the circles with a black pen. And then I just use the black pen to mostly fill in the circle. The bow die is in the bitty ball set. I've cut that out of red and I'm going to add that to his shirt. And then while I had the red out, I went ahead and cut the piece that's used to make both the collar and the cloak. And I've cut that out of red twice so that I have four pieces. The rest of the decor I will add after assembling the bitty balls. So if you need help with that, go watch that bitty ball assembly video. The ears die has an emboss feature. So for my Spellbinders Platinum 6, I put that face up on the platform, then I put the squishy mat over the top, and then the purple mat. And those, those items come with the machine. But if you have a different machine, you just need to check on YouTube to find out what is the sandwich for embossing a wafer thin die. And now it's easy to seat that die right back into those grooves again and run it through with a regular die cutting sandwich to cut it. I grabbed a very light marker, in my case it's an E000, just to add a little bit of shading to the inner parts of the ear. And where I like to attach the vampire ears is just in the black space that's above the decorator piece in the bottom half of the ball on either side. So that generally is enough surface area to be able to have those ears attached, but you could always go a little lower if you needed to. So those ears are going to contribute to the overall footprint of the vampire when it's collapsed. So you'll see in the collapsed position, it does add quite a lot of width. So just be thinking of that when you're planning out your card. Okay, next I'll work on the collar. And I've decided to make that two-tone. So I've cut the collar pieces out of both black and red, but that is just an aesthetic choice. You could absolutely use just one of them. It doesn't need two. I just decided I wanted them two-tone. Okay, so I'm looking for the corner because that's the corner that lines up with the side of the ball. So it's the straight corner side that gets glued down. So I'm just going to add my adhesive all over that panel of the ball and then just line it up with that corner. And then the excess is going to go towards the front. So same thing on this side. I coat that whole panel with adhesive, line up the corner that will line up perfectly with that trapezoid and then the excess comes to the front. Okay, I use those same pieces to make the cloak, but this time as I glue them back to back, I'm going to trap a little piece of twine on either side to be able to make a tie. And the twine comes out on the rounded side of the cloak. And then I've got that corner again to line up with the ball. So I've got my two X panels that don't have any decorator pieces on them yet. I'm going to coat that with adhesive, use that upper left corner to line that up. Same thing on the other side. This time it'll be the upper right corner. Okay, and then I just take the twine and I tie it into a decorative bow and cut off the excess. In the bitty ball set, there is a set of bare ears and that's what I cut out of black to be his shoes. And then I just attach those to the bottom of the ball. And then to finish out the vampire, I just need to connect the head to the body. And it's usually easiest to do that by flattening them both so that you can make sure that they line up right over the top of each other. Okay, and remember I mentioned you do need a little bit larger card size for a vampire. So you can see you need six. It'll just fit in six. So I would definitely plan on six and a half minimum width, one, two, three, four, probably five inch. So a five by seven card would be absolutely perfect to hold the vampire. Okay, so now let me show you the assembly of the pumpkins. 
For the stacked pumpkin head character, I'm going to use the Bitty Ball. So that's the smaller one. I've cut that out of a lighter orange and then decorated it with the darker orange trapezoids from the exact pack. And then for the standalone jack-o'-lantern, I thought I would use the surprise ball to show the difference in size. And for that one, I've cut both the ball halves and the decorator pieces out of the darker orange. So for both pumpkins, I'm going to add the jack-o'-lantern face in the section that's connected, so the two panels that are connected. So the bottom one's going to be where the smile goes, and then the top one is going to be where the nose and the eyes go. And all of those pieces come out of the character add-ons one set. So for the eyes, it cuts four triangles so that you can actually put them across a seam. And a quick stick can be very helpful for that to pick those up. But you just decide where you want the eyes to go and put them in the center panel and then just join them together to give you the location of the other triangle on the other side of the split. And then just do that on the other side as well. Okay, now then for the smile, it's too wide for the panel. So you just put it on there where you want it and then snip off the excess and move it to the adjacent panel kind of in the same manner. Just join them up long enough to see where it goes and then glue it on the other panel so that it lines up. This is optional, but I like to take a black marker of some kind and just mark the sides of the orange cardstock wherever the black crosses it, and it just really kind of helps you not have a little orange stripe in the middle. Okay, for the surprise ball pumpkin, I did the exact same thing with the eyes with the mouth. Next, I assemble the balls in the usual manner. For the standalone jack-o'-lantern, I've added a brad on the bottom so that I can spin it in a card. I didn't do that with this one because it's just going to be the head of a stacked character. If you're using the exact pack, there are two greens to choose from. You've got this vine piece and the stem. You need two vine pieces and one stem for each pumpkin. So I'll just do one out of each color to show the difference. And on the vine piece, what I like to do is the same thing I did with the nose for the vampires. Just put it on fun foam with my bone folder to curl the spikes of the vine. So I can either join those together with tape or I could just glue them onto the top of the pumpkin, but I'll just show it with tape. So what I've done is I've just put some pieces of tape on either side of the little divot that holds the stem and a little piece to hold the actual stem on. So I use the fold of the stem get it into the tape underneath the vine piece. And then I have those two other pieces of tape are actually outstretched so that they will hold the two sides of the vine together. Okay, so now I've actually got the whole top of the pumpkin in a single piece with some double stick tape underneath it. So that'll make it very easy for adding to the top of the pumpkin. I think it looks nice if I brush a little bit of ink around the vine and the stem first. And then I've got those pieces of tape then to connect the vine and stem to the top of the pumpkin. And then I just repeated that process for the other pumpkin. An idea to make the face stand out a little bit more would be to use like a Wink of Stella or a Nouveau glitter pen to just add some shimmer and shine. For a Jack pumpkin head character, what I did is I did purple and black joined together for the bitty ball structure and then put the purple trapezoids everywhere except the two where the cloak are going to go. And then I used an orange shirt and black bow tie. So that's very similar to the vampire. It's just different colors. And then I'll just assemble that. So this body is basically going to be the exact same as the vampire, except that I am going to put a little collar at the top. But the shoes are going to be the bear ears out of the bitty ball. That's just like with the vampire. I did the cloak by making a two-tone purple on the outside, black on the inside, and then just line that up and put that on the side panels, just like with the vampire body. I tie the cloak strings into a bow and trim off the excess. To make the vine piece into a collar, I just don't add the stem, and then I align it with a vertical seam. And then the last thing is just to connect the head to the body. And once again, if I flatten that, then I can just make sure that the two balls are lined up perfectly over the top of each other. If you are going to put Jack Pumpkin Head into a card, you will need a little bit larger card than usual because of the cloak, but not as large as with the vampire. So this one could fit in, say, a 5x6 instead of a 5x7. 
And you do have the option if you wanted to, to add those arms that come in the bitty ball, maybe sticking out a little bit from the cloak for either the Jack Pumpkin head or the vampire. I love to end assembly videos with some great cards by our team. I love the color scheme on this card by Kelly Booth with the teal jack-o'-lantern. Lois Bach also made a teal pumpkin, but put it alongside a traditional orange one and put them both in a slimline card. Here's a wonderfully spooky vampire card by Fran Sabad. And notice Fran's placement of the vampire's nose. She's just glued that to the upper panel instead of sandwiching it between the layers. Tons to see and admire in this card by Fran, but I particularly like her vellum ghosts and the vellum background shadow to Happy Halloween. And then another vampire card by Fran, and I just really love the purple for the cloak. This jack-o'-lantern card by Frances Byrne uses a belly band to keep it closed. A vampire Halloween card by Lois Bach, and I like that in the corner she's written Blood Donors Needed. And then another card by Lois Bach with a jack-o'-lantern on some fun Halloween polka dot paper. The character add-ons one die set is available now from a lot of your favorite local and online retailers, as well as on our website, KarenBurniston.com. Thanks for watching. If you click on the website link, you'll go to KarenBurniston.com, where you can find out information about purchasing these dies, as well as links to all my other social media accounts. You can subscribe to this YouTube channel and check out some of my other videos. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.